With me, House Minority Whip Steny Hoyer. You can see him here seven years ago, standing behind President Obama as he signed Obamacare into law. He just voted no today on the GOP bill. Nice to see you, sir. Greta, good to be with you. All right, let me ask you some quick questions. Um, the president says premiums are going down. Have you read the bill, and is that what you understand? I, I've read the bill, but all, also, very importantly, I've read the CBO report that uh, is the independent congressional advisor on, on fiscal matters, uh, and they say premiums are going up 24 to 29 percent uh, for the average policyholder. So uh, any, any sense uh, that uh, what Trump represented as lower costs uh, clearly is not going to happen in this bill. Furthermore, he, of course, he said uh, everybody was going to have insurance. CBO says 24 million people minimum are going to lose their insurance. So uh, from those standpoints, uh, the Trump care bill did not accomplish what uh, he promised. All right. You say the CBO score. I was under the understanding, and tell me if I'm wrong, that, the, that one of the complaints about this by some on your side of the aisle mainly, and even Senator Graham in the Senate, is that it hadn't been scored. Is that you talking about the score of pre-amendments? Greta, that's, that's correct. The amendment has not yet been scored. And, of course, Paul Ryan had represented uh, years ago and recently that we shouldn't consider a bill that didn't have a uh, CBO score. This bill didn't in that sense. But the, but the original bill, uh, which was passed uh, at the same time, uh, it, it became one bill. The original bill, CBO scored, which was not changed, uh, as losing 24 million people from insurance over the next few years. Uh, so from that standpoint, uh, that score is is still valid. What is not scored uh, is the number of people who are going to lose pre-existing conditions, the cost that there will be to those uh, folks uh, if they can possibly get uh, coverage, notwithstanding a pre-existing condition. So that's the score that we did not get from CBO. All right. Republicans have said that uh, that Obamacare was going to collapse, that it was catastrophic. If nothing had been passed, well, assuming that this GOP bill never gets signed into law, what would you predict would happen to Obamacare if it's left alone as it is. Well, if it's left alone, uh, but of course the Republicans have not left it alone. When Trump took office, one of the first things he does did was to tell IRS not to worry about uh, the mandate. Obviously, if you're going to have insurance, you need a, a broad cohort of insurance so you can spread the risk. Uh, and uh, they've undermined that already. Obviously, they've undermined confidence over the last six or seven years, saying uh, they wanted to repeal it and it was a bad bill. Uh, but uh, going forward, if they do not sabotage it, uh, one of the things, as you know, we had an argument about is the uh, cost-sharing subsidies uh, so that people of uh, uh, little income uh, will have not only their premiums uh, paid, uh, but their copay and their deductibles uh, they'll get help with. That's absolutely essential from the insurance company's standpoint because that's what they uh, marketed and priced their product at, given that that was in the law and that should be paid. So, uh, unfortunately, uh, the Republicans, without the passage of a bill can sabotage the bills working, undermine if, the confidence. If they didn't do anything, if they didn't touch it, if, they, if we just left oh, Obamacare yes. as is, what happens? C CBO says that Obamacare, uh, or, or as we like to call it, the Affordable Care Act, uh, will, will stabilize, uh, will do what it's intended to do, open up in insurance to and make it affordable for a vast number of the American public. So if, uh, in fact, uh, the Republicans in the administration cooperate in carrying out the law as it's written, then uh, CBO says it will be stable. All right. Um, I, I will spare you my singing and also spare myself so it doesn't end up on YouTube. But after it was passed, there was some jeering, mocking, singing, whatever you want to call it, by the Democrats uh, about, hey, hey, goodbye. I know you know the song. Um, What's your thought on that? Does I'm not going to sing it either. Yeah, all right, uh, I'm, a, I'm not going to ask you to sing it. I'll spare you a YouTube uh, presence, too. Well, um, what, what do you make of that jeering? Well, I think it was spontaneous, it was, and it was a, a, a reflection of, I think, a broad uh, feeling in the Democratic Party that uh, Republicans are going to rue the day when they voted for this bill. Now, there were only 217 of them. Uh, it was a very close, razor-thin margin. Uh, but I think there is a strong feeling on our side of the aisle uh, that this vote is going to prove to be very, very harmful uh, to the interests of Republicans in the Congress of the United States who support it, because it, it is going to undermine health care. It is going to up uh, prices. Uh, it is going to put a senior tax uh, on those between 50 and 64, a very substantial one. And it is going to make health care less available. So I think uh, uh, our feeling is this was a bad vote for Republicans. 
Uh, we've now seen a, a huge change, 25 percent greater support uh, for the Affordable Care Act than existed before the Trump election. It was gone from 42 uh, to 55, and 75 percent of Americans say, look, fix it, don't replace it. Uh, so that uh, we just think it was a bad vote, and I think that some members thought that uh, they wanted to articulate that in song, and they did. Congressman, thank you. Remember, I didn't ask you to sing it, so come back. Uh, Greta, you're, you. always, you're always very kind. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.